you're going somewhere. I believe with God, all things are possible and you are going somewhere exciting. So you need the Lord's help. I need the Lord's help. Let's ask him right now. Precious Heavenly Father, we implore you, we ask for your help right now on location, right there in my friend's life, in our life, Lord, as we indulge in your word, the word of truth. Unfold it, reveal it to us by your precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Listen, there is great pressure for many people today, a trial of life, so to speak. And although seasons come and go, you will never, ever forget your choices in this season. Pressure can make diamonds, but too much pressure can also break things can break people's lives. With God's power, with his connection, you get to decide whether the trials and the tribulations make you or break you. So let's get into this brand new series, Connected, Connected Part One. We're gonna call this, we're gonna subtitle this, Connected, Directed, and Protected. In the professional world, you've gotta be connected. You need influential relationships. You know the old adage, it's not what you know, but who you know. It has bona fide leverage to it. In so many ways, it's true. You can't even get to heaven on good works, but you got to know somebody. You got to know Jesus. There's a strange movement today that's a form of autonomy subject to Marxism. Be your own person. Do what you want, but but do it the way we tell you, with as much chaos as possible. You know, the funny thing about anarchy is it's being proposed as new thinking. It's just old sin with new skin. We've already been there and done that. It's an old poison that destroys the soul. It destroys your soul. Ray Charles, you know, the late, great, amazing singer, songwriter, he once said this, what is a soul? It's like electricity. We don't really know what it is, but it's a force that can light a room. God knows what it is and who you are. You and I were never designed or made to be independent. You were made for connection, good, orderly, healthy, God-ordained connections. Connection that transfers power, good, life-giving power. My brother had just bought a beautiful older home, so I was helping him make some of the electrical wiring fixes. The previous owner had cut some corners and allowed some very bad connections in their wiring. I was working in a ceiling box that was a tangle of wires up there, so I'm on a stepladder, and I was, I was sure I turned off all the power at the fuse box, very important. Well, thinking all the power was actually off to the box, I reached to grab a wire and I got zapped so bad, the power threw me off the metal ladder and onto the ground. I found out the hard way. That was not a good connection. That's right. Tim Allen, you know, the famous actor, comedian, Santa Claus, the voice of Buzz Lightyear. He said, my nephew tried to stick a penny into a plug. Whoever said a penny doesn't go far didn't see him shoot across that floor. So apparently I'm not the only one who's hooked up to power in a bad way, right? God wants you connected, but in a good way, in a right way, not a throw you across the room way. And yet connections are vital to have the power flowing in your life to get outcomes. So what's in this for you? What's in this series for you? If you're struggling with loneliness, depression, or maybe fear of the unknown, this is for you. If you're feeling isolated, unmotivated, maybe even just plain discouraged, this is for you. This connected series based on God's word, this is what it's going to do. It's going to address the powerlessness that you feel. Because you see, this is not God's will for you to feel this way, completely powerless. Number two, it's gonna give you real life answers. Life answers that won't break down or fail over time. God's unfailing in what he does. Number three, it's gonna increase your joy and your happiness quotient, regardless of your circumstances. That's the biblical promise that God gives us, that you get to have joy and peace no matter what the circumstances are. And number four, it's gonna cut the head off of lonely in your life. 
right? We can make real stupid choices when we're lonely. It's going to cut the head of lonely off. And number five, it's going to give you both spiritual and practical steps on living connected, directed, and protected. Some of us have this illusion of being connected and therefore having power. A seven-year-old little girl, she said, I appreciate my teachers for teaching me words that help me argue with my parents. Hmm, that's not quite what we're talking about, but yes, that's the kind of thing we want to save you from. That's what we want to protect you from. Proper connection means potential power, life-giving power. You were designed to be connected. Why? So that you'll have power, so that you'll be lit up from the inside out. The world pursues power, but fake versions, tragic, self-destructive types of power that they believe will enhance their autonomy. As I found out with that electrical box, good power still needs a proper connection. Otherwise, it does bad, dangerous, throw you across the room type of things because of those bad connections. On the other hand, God has the genuine power because he is the genuine power source and he is the true life connection. Look at Ephesians 5, starting at verse 8. For once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Lead the lives of those native born to the light. For the fruit, the effect, the product of light consists in every form of kindly goodness, uprightness of heart, and trueness of life. You don't see Wi-Fi or cellular signal in your home, do you? No, no. But you do recognize the effect of it, the product, or as Ephesians said, the fruit of this thing. You sure hear the protests when effect of it is not there, right? Even when it's you complaining. I love what Will Ferrell said, the comedian, the famous movie star. He said, before you marry a person, you should first make them use a computer with slow internet service to see who they really are. Look, we all want the power. We want outcome, fruitfulness. People get frustrated and discouraged when they're disconnected. There are aspects and elements of power that you don't see, but you do see the effects of it. In most homes, there is wiring hidden within the walls everywhere. You don't see it, but you see you recognize the power that the wiring makes available to you. You plug in your appliance with faith for the unseen power distribution. In a similar manner, that's the invisible way that God, faith, and his power operate. Unseen, but with powerful outcome and results based on the integrity of the connection. Moses asked to see God's glory, his power, the unseen essence of who God was. After God protected him in the shelter of the rock, he made God made his goodness and his name to pass by. And guess what? Moses looked at just the fumes of it and he was glowing for weeks. Jesus went up on the Mount of Transfiguration for a heavenly conference. Even Jesus came down from the mountain glowing. Adam and Eve, they were in the Garden of Eden without sin and without clothes. Yes, naked, but connected, so connected to God and therefore empowered with light from within before they sinned, I believe Adam and Eve glowed. There's nothing wrong with your design, my friend. It's your connection. It's your connectedness. If you're not lit, then the truth is you're not connected or you're not connected properly. Look at this light bulb. This is like you. Very simple. You're much more complicated. But this light bulb is like you. A great design. It was created like you. This light bulb was made like you, made on purpose for a purpose. You could see that. Look at that. It's a great design. Very simple. Much more simple than you. But it was made on purpose for a purpose. Now, we know something instinctively about this light bulb. We know that this thing was made for light, to light up. So maybe if I just hold it still, it will evolve into being lit. Hmm, nothing happening. Well, okay, 
So if it's not evolution, then maybe we've got to light ourselves up. Like, you know, maybe we just got to get enough love, enough acceptance and people liking us and get enough Facebook likes. So it's just, oh, you know, it, it would just, is that, am I getting too close to home? Is that too close to home for you? Would it shock you to know that neither Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, or any other social media platform will light up your bulb? No matter how many likes and followers you get, it's not gonna light up your bulb. So maybe it's a matter of light producing activities, right? Here we go. I got my flashlight here. Maybe if, if we just stimulate the intellect of this design from the outside in, or how about if I just accentuate the curves of this light bulb? Let's face it, there's nothing wrong with getting in better in shape, right? That's a good thing. Or maybe it's just getting religious, getting from the outside in, getting some religion, some spiritual sacrificing and praying more. This bulb would just need to sacrifice more. It would get lit up. My friend, it's still not connected, right? Are you connected? And after a while of faking it and trying desperately to work it, you realize it's just futile. You feel futile. You feel like this, you get desperate. Maybe it should just cease to be. Maybe this light bulb should just cease to be. Maybe then it won't feel so empty, so unlit, so in the dark and discouraged. The true light design is meant to come from the inside out. You know that, but you've got to be connected. To be connected, you've got to submit. You've got to submit to the source. The problem with even the word submission is that so many leaders have abused this idea, especially in religious circles. Leaders become so desperate for control that they use the term submit like a hammer. Like a hammer. Can you imagine a hammer on this precious little light bulb? It wouldn't work, but that that's not love. You see, that's not God's way. That's not Jesus. He stands at the door and he knocks. You get to connect with him because he offers a place for you, but it's your choice, your call. God gives you the choice, but even God, yes, even God won't force you to submit to your amazing design for light, for life, for love. You you get to choose what you're gonna do with your design. Now watch, watch this carefully, closely. Watch as this whole discussion gets resolved. It gets resolved as it turns, as the conversation turns and you submit into this great power source for great outcome. The moment you're connected, you begin to shine, not from the outside in, no, but from the inside out, the way God designed you. Jesus is the connection by faith to the power source of life. God's love flows from Jesus into you. God doesn't just want to be with you, my friend. No, he wants to fill you, power you, light you up from the inside out. Isn't that beautiful? Aren't you glad to know that? Praise God. Ray Charles, remember what he said? Your soul can light a room. But Jesus says this, you can light up the world. Remember, although power is invisible, being properly connected, the outcome is illuminating. It shines. Yes, power brings light. That's why to be connected is to be directed, is to be protected. Let's read Ephesians 1, starting at verse 17. This is Paul the apostle talking to the church. He says, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, in knowing him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened so that you can know what is the hope of his calling and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. And so that you can know what is the exceeding and unlimited greatness of his power in and for us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Then verse 20, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. In the heavenly places. Look, this power lighting you up is the same power that Father God used to raise up Jesus from the dead and seat him at his right hand on heaven's throne. Same power. And you get to have it. You get to possess it. Connected is directed 
is protected because you don't get some lesser junior power. Jesus came so that we could get the, the power, his power, his power. But look at the overall tone of those verses in Ephesians. Paul's praying that you know that your understanding is enlightened. Being an ignorant, Bible illiterate Christian is not fun. It's not directed. It's not good. And therefore, it's not protected. Listen, if you don't know, you will not glow. And to the extent that you know, that is the extent you glow. Hosea 4, 6, God talking to his people, he says, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge, because of what they don't know. Bill Gates, you know him, the billionaire co-founder of Microsoft. Here's a quote from him. People always fear change, he said. People feared electricity when it was invented, didn't they? People feared coal. They feared gas-powered engines. There will always be ignorance, and ignorance leads to fear. But with time, people will come to accept their silicon masters. Oh, oh, Billy, 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 you need knowledge of the real power source. You should ask Steve Jobs how that thinking worked out in his mortality. No matter how much you have materially, you're still off, unlit, without power. If you're truth ignorant, let me say it again, that's not connected. It's not directed and therefore unprotected. Jim Ron. Great author, motivational speaker, and entrepreneur. He said this, time is more valuable than money. You can get more money, but you cannot get more time. And you know what? That is true if, if you're not connected to the source of all time, power, and life. Connected or submitted to Christ, you have mastery even over eternity. Jesus gives you eternal life. He gives it to you unfailing, everlasting life and light. Look at what Jesus said in John 7, verse 38. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Jesus is talking about unfailing streams of light and more light coming out of you. Life moves from the inside out. Not from the outside in, but from the inside out. The light source moves from the inside out. That's why Jesus said a person is not contaminated from the outside in, but from the inside out. God comes into your heart. That's the power plug in. The light comes from the inside out, just like our bulb. God produces life by putting the seed of his power into the womb of your heart. Light B. Look at James 1, verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of all light, in whom there can be no variation, rising or setting, or shadow cast by his turning. To be a child of God is to be a child of light. To plug in your design requires submission. Here's the bottom line. Your health can't light you. Money can't light you. Your good deeds your good ideas, your popularity can't light you up. The world's natural outside supply cannot light you up, my friend. It won't light up your design. Only God, the Father of all light, can light you up. Being connected to his son with Jesus, you light up. Now, here's a lie that some believe. My light is out, therefore, it must be God's will for me. This is a dangerous mode of thought for anyone, especially believers. Here's the deception. Well, yes, I believe God, but I believe the circumstances more than I believe God's word. Or this, my light is out, therefore it must be God's will that my light is out. The darkness instructs me. Really? Where's the pursuit of being connected by faith to Christ Jesus? Stop making designer doctrines out of your circumstances, your experience. Don't be picking and choosing facts in your life to invent your own brand of theology. Facts change, but truth is forever. It's eternal. You want to add time to your life? Get plugged into the truth. 
There are experiences today that people make sub-doctrines out of that are circumstantial and based on facts. You may not have a car, but that doesn't mean it's God's will for you to be without one. Here's another one. You may not have a job today, but that doesn't conclude that it's God's will for you to be jobless. How about this? You may have fallen off your bicycle. That doesn't mean God wanted it to happen or that he didn't warn you about the pothole that you were racing toward. Here's another thought. You might be in a very painful marriage, but that doesn't mean God put you there. You see, we blame God because it's too painful to take responsibility for our light being dark. Society teaches us to blame everyone and everything, but bottom line is you're still not lit, are you? In a crowd, but still lonely. Blaming everyone, but still guilty. Living promiscuous, but not feeling free. Eating everything I can find, taking all the pills I can get, drinking all the drinks that I can have, but still empty. There's no substitute for real power, God's power, His love, and no other way to connect but by faith in Jesus Christ. You need to be lit, my friend. We all long to light up according to our design. And if you ain't lit, well, don't spit, don't quit, and don't throw a fit. Just cool it, sit, and submit. It's that easy. Look how easy it is. Let me show you again. We grab our light here. Look how easy it is. This is your design. And as you just submit and you turn, you submit, what was dark is now light. What was off is now on. That's you. That's you. This is you lit up from the inside, the power of God flowing through you, lit up and shining for all the world to see. Isaiah 60 verses 2 and 3. Darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness will cover the peoples. Wow, isn't that amazing? Have you been wondering at the darkness? But the Lord will rise upon you and his glory and brilliance will be seen on you. Verse three, nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. God's light coming up on the inside of you becomes your light in this world. That's you, made in the image of light to be a shining light, shining out for the world to see. Did you get that? The world should see your light. You'll never be happy or content waiting for light to happen, my friend, waiting for someone to shine their light on you or to give you a break or, or shine their light into you. Give me, give me. No, no. There is that temporary relief, of course. You can get that temporary high, a little borrowed fake light, but you're still empty, unlit, dark, unfulfilled. It feels so lonely and yet a crowd doesn't touch the pain of it. Being in a crowd or with others only intensifies the bitterness of it. Look, let God's love fill you, empower you by having faith in his son, Jesus. And what happens? The light turns on. Let God's love fill you, empower you by having faith in his son, Jesus and the light is on. Praise God. Look at what Jesus said here in John 14, verse 6. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by, through me. Let God's love fill you, empower you by having faith in his son, Jesus. You don't have to wait to connect with God's love and power source. You can do that right now, right now. Oh, but Pastor Stephen, I, I've been a believer for years. Okay, okay, but the evidence of being truly connected is that you're directed and that leads you to being protected. Remember, don't take the bad experiences and blame God by inventing a new doctrine. God's not condemning you right now. He knows stuff went wrong. You know stuff went wrong, but God's not condemning you. But don't avoid personal responsibility. Submission is the first step to properly being connected. That's when we get to turn into his power. 
Yes, that's right. To truly believe is to truly receive, to own it, to be responsible. Look at Acts chapter 16, verse 31. It says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household as well. My grandmother on my father's side, she wrote a letter to her 12 children as she was slipping from this life into immortality. She knew that she didn't have long. She put this verse, this particular verse into her letter, knowing that many of her adult children were still unplugged from the light source. They were living lives chasing destructive, fraudulent power sources that promised a feeling but only delivered emptiness and pain. She was plugged into God's promise, though, and she believed Acts 16, verse 31. You and your household will be saved. She heard those words from God's mouth. You and your household will be saved. My dad was the last one of those kids to give his life to Christ, the last one to allow God's power to power up his design. But now he's connected. The light shining on the inside, shining, lighting up his life. The light of God's love is not something abstract or distant. It's on the inside of him, shining, lighting up his life. I believe that as you've been listening to God's word today, faith has been rising in your heart. Your believer switch has been switched on. God's word is a pure source of faith power. So now you can activate that faith and be directly connected to God, his love, his light, the father of all lights. Pray this with me. Heavenly Father, I turn away from my darkness, from my sin. I take responsibility and I ask you to forgive me. Jesus died on the cross for me, paid the price. By your mighty power, God, you raised him up from the grave. Jesus, come into my heart. Power up my life. Give me your light. Give me your love. I'm born again. I belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's Word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember Jesus is Lord and in Him we can live life strong.